But welcome to Phenomenal Stemmets, guys. Thanks so much for joining. I have a special person. His name is Mr. Howard Webley. And uh, we're just going to get right into Howard because I know you have some, some work to do. So Howard received his Bachelor's of Science uh, in Microbiology from the University of Massachusetts in, at Amherst. And he's going to talk about his path as a micro biologists all right so first off when did you fall in love with your discipline when did you fall in love with your discipline yeah um microbiology it was pretty interesting to me i, I in, in thinking about it now i think back and i realized that uh most if not all of it was uh primarily attributed to my sister my oldest sister um while we were growing up she actually became a microbiologist. She became a, a, a clinical microbiologist uh, back in the Bronx there, and um, and so in her uh, in her discipline and her studies and everything, she brought all those books home. And, and um, so one of the big things is that I was always a science person. Like I always loved science. I always loved science. Growing up, you know, the, the parents, everybody knew, <laughs> all the friends knew that I had this nerd. Uh, side of me. Hold on, Howard. You, you, you got a lot. Of, one second, Howard. Stuff. You seem like having a lot of pausing. Mm -hmm. Everything is good. I think so. I don't know if anything. Yeah. No okay. Go, go ahead. I'm seeing you a little better. Go ahead. So you were talking about you were like a you were like um, a nerd. <laughs> yeah, I was very much into science. Uh, I really was. I, I would always watch. Um, science shows, um, you know, back in the day, you had three, two, one contact, you had all these types of stuff that were going on on PBS. Um, I would watch Wild America with Marty Stauffer, this kind of stuff. You got a YouTube these days, you know, see if you could still pull them up. Mm. But um, these are the type of things that I was into. I was always into science um, and, and wildlife and nature. Um, I would watch nature. I watched, I lived on PBS and, um, and in the summertime, I was just out in the yard, but I wasn't playing with friends and everything. I was out just looking at ants and, and just looking at insects, looking at, you know, all type of biological life. Um, and so I enjoyed learning it in school. Um, mm -hmm. But my sister, like I said, she was, um, the, the books were there at home. You know, I, would, I was that kid. I, I would just look at the encyclopedia I just be, you know, looking at looking at everything, and it's like this like Peter that had to do with human body and nature and all these types of things. So I was already a talker, um, and so my parents knew that uh, everything I learned, anything I learned, I would just tell them about. And um, and then my my um, my grandmother was a teacher. I had a lot of teachers in my uh, in my uh, family my environment also. Mm. Um, yeah, my family, my grandmother, my grand aunt. <clears throat> You know, so you go to Jamaica. Jamaica was just one big old, you know, anytime I visited Jamaica, it was just a huge, um, you know, like a zoo for me. It was just a huge science store. Um, yeah, you know, the wildlife, yeah, you ecosystems. Into the yard, into the wildlife. I would just chase, chase after lizards and all this kind of stuff and bullfrogs and all these things. You know, so that was just me. They knew. And, um, and so I, anything I saw, I would talk about, you know, just love learning these type of things. And so for microbiology, um, specifically, when I, uh, when I was in high school and I was looking, I knew I wanted to do biology. And so, but I didn't want to do biology. Let me explain. Mm -hmm. So every, every university had biology as a, um, as a major. And I just had it in my mind that I wanted to do something more specific um, from early. Um, and so I actually didn't know for, for sure that I wanted to do microbiology. But when I looked at UMass's um, uh, you know, area disciplines and majors and so forth, I saw that they had specifically a biology department, but they also had specifically a microbiology department. Mm -hmm. So that caught my attention. Um, so when I started looking at the program, and researching it and everything, it was just really interesting. And um, and one of the things about UMass, because I'm looking at all these schools in the surrounding areas, but I knew I wanted to leave the leave the state of New York. And uh, 
UMass was actually, even though it was all the way in Massachusetts, it was actually only two and a half hours away. Mm-hmm. And then I had family in Massachusetts as well. So it just became, it was just a fit. Um, back then, I wasn't necessarily looking at how the Lord was, was working in my life, moving in my life. So I just, um, turned out that's what it was. The doors were opening up. And so I just decided to go that route. And, um, you know, I visited the school, visited the department, creation that major, uh, just there as a whole department, a small department. So that mm-hmm. means you got that student faculty ratio that was good for learning. Um, so I just went along with it. And um, it was just one of those areas that as I got into it, it's funny because when I was in school, when I got into my, I didn't get into my major until, you know, until about sophomore year, the end okay. of sophomore year, so second semester sophomore year. And that's when it just started, it just went, poof, it just, it just started to blow up for me. And Like uh, and, and, you started and, to really just, enjoy it? it? Yeah, enjoy it. That's the word. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty much where, uh, where, where micro began for me. Um, so like, it's hugely, it was, yeah. So, yeah, so it's like you, you, so the, the, a little background on you, born and raised in New York City by Jamaican parents, but you got the opportunity to travel to Jamaica as a child and um, visit a different environment, a country environment, a rainforest environment. And that's the beauty of being an immigrant, um, but also having the ability to travel and see other ecosystems. I was saying this to, to parents before that, you know, in the summertime, you got to take them out of the city and, and get give them an opportunity to see multiple types of ecosystems. And that 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 alone will teach them a love for biology. So it's just amazing that you told a story about how when you would go to Jamaica and you would be in that that environment, that 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 tropical environment with reptiles and all kinds of things that you did not see in New York City. There were no lizards in New York. <laughs> and that was like a that was like a beginning point for you. And of course, you know your 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 older sister. Wow, that's interesting. Um, it's, it's amazing. Like I yeah, talk. It's, it's, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that. Um, I was just telling a, a friend of mine the other day about how amazing it is. The first time I drove uh, from New York to Florida, I was talking about how how huge this country is and how diverse the uh, the, the different the geography of it is. Mm-hmm. And how when I drove from New York, it was about, it was in the middle of winter in December Mm -hmm. and actually came out of a snowstorm and I drove down, reached all the way down into, you know, Northern Florida. And it's like, my car was the only one that had all the salt and all the (laughs) the remnants of the snow on it and everything. And, um, but what was amazing for me is that like in a, in, in the span of just a couple of hours, I was now in, uh, you know, tropical sort of, environment, basically a subtropical environment. Yeah. You know, it was with palm trees and everything, but I just came from a snowstorm with only deciduous trees and, and you know, mm-hmm. with, you know, all, so it was, it was very interesting. Um, and then when my, I'm talking about it in Jamaica, and I went my, when my cousins and so forth, we're probably going to see this later on at some point, you know, when they, when they, when they, when they finally moved to the States, and they came up to the U. Came up to uh, New York. You know, they already had in their mind what they may see in New York, but they didn't have in mind. I, I, I'm pretty sure nobody thought about the wildlife that they would see in New York. And mm-hmm. I just remember my cousin, who was probably in her, you know, in her uh, mid thirties when she first came up, and and she saw a squirrel, and she was like, <laughs> she was screaming. She was like, "What? <laughs> it's a rat!" <laughs> And I was like, oh, man, oh, wow, yeah, you don't know what really that is. And I'm like, yeah, they all over the place. I'm sorry about that. Just, like, squirrels are like lizards in Florida. Squirrels are everywhere. Right. Squirrels and pigeons like, are in New York like lizards are in Florida. Yeah, it's an amazing thing. Um, okay, that's interesting. There's a lot of delay in your on your side. I don't know why. It wasn't like that before. Um mm-hmm. But in my um, because I'm using my uh, maybe your Wi Fi. Let me plug it in. So, 
Sorry for the delay there. No problem. But maybe like, yeah, being so plugged sure in. A, make sure it's not a power issue. Yeah. And I, don't, I wouldn't think it would be power. It would probably be like Wi-Fi, but it's all good. All right. So what tools did you use to discipline yourself? What tools did you use to discipline yourself as a um, microbiology major? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, uh, I had no discipline. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being real. <laughs> I'm gonna be real. I had no discipline, man. I, I, um, you know, I we had a, it was an educated environment and family that I had, but but we didn't we didn't in terms of these specifics on how to discipline oneself in an educational environment uh, to be the best that you can be. That type of discipline that I learned about later on, I didn't have it in the beginning. Um, I was really, I was straight, you know, passion oriented. Um, mm. When I was in high school, I just drove towards the thing that was most interesting to me. Um, and science basically was it. Everywhere, I, I, my, my, my level of focus was always in the sciences. So, so I just gravitated. So it, for me, it was never about, I need to do the best that I can. I, I'm sorry, I'm a mid. You know, at that time in my life, it was never about, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't have that training to begin with where it's like, okay, this is what you do in order to excel, in order to be an A student at this level, this particular level. I hadn't received that sort of training. Um, so the answer to your question, what I came to realize was actually modeling. Um, mm. I had the opportunity, the, 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 the science uh, program that I was in, it was a, it was a, they called it the, the medical science honors program uh David Clinton High School that I went to in the Bronx public school and um the program itself was just geared towards success uh science it was basically stem they didn't have the term back back then, then yeah um, yeah like but in, in late 90s but yeah but it was basically stem oriented mm -hmm. um so you know you had you had the big science schools like our Bronx science our Bronx school of science you had you know, style to say you had Brooklyn, Brooklyn Tech, Tech. And this was a public school that had a program there uh, that 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 was geared towards um, you know students that were into the sciences, but what were doing well in the sciences, and so they were able to all come together there. That's where I met you know most of the friends I had these days, all the way from high school all the way up. It was just people who were like minded. And, um, and, 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 and were interested in the same sorts of things that I was interested in. And so a lot of the things that I learned back then, and that still wasn't enough actually at that time, because I, I myself still wasn't that much interested in just being overall academically savvy and sound. Mm -hmm. I just liked the sciences. And so, and so the, 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 the curriculum that we had, I was able to squeeze through it. <laughs> Honestly, I was able to squeeze through it by my level of interest but i still had not developed skills of discipline i would say mm. but man when it came to you know going into a science class and learning everything that was in it and then going through let's say the regents exams and so forth i prided myself on doing it right. i can't say that i really had a, 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 a you know i ran i was also you know i was a student athlete i ran track throughout all of high school and um I can't say that I was totally into my track uh, and, and, and not into my academics. I had a balance going on. But in terms of having the skills, knowing, you know, knowing the skills, knowing what I needed to do to be a complete student athlete, yeah, I didn't, I didn't have that level of discipline academically. But I so your, really lo your love for science, your love for science basically pushed you through? Like, so even though you didn't have a structured discipline in your field. Uh, it's just that you had a great background in high school and, and the background that you were given in high school gave you the ability to, to, to push through uh, into college, even if you didn't discipline yourself to be the best or to have excellence, um, you still succeeded.
So it was something good. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I mean, we had we also had the structure. I must say, we also had the structure within the program. So right. we had the advisors. We had the teachers. I mean, this stuff is pivotal. You look at the school system now. We had teachers who uh, who believed in you. They 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 knew that you were there for for a reason. They were they believed that they were there for a reason. Right. Uh, to educate you, it, it wasn't a half it wasn't a halfway kind of thing for them. Where I'm just here getting a check. They, they we really we really fed into uh, their belief in us. Mm. Um, and so 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 for, for those of us who such as myself were sort of needed the encouragement. You know, there were there were those of us who were very much uh, well uh, um, uh, self motivated and everything, and then there were those of us who were sort of on the margin. We didn't know exactly everything that we needed to do, but those people were on top of us. They were on top of us, and so that is how we started to develop uh, our confidence and, and basically self efficacy that we can do this thing. And that's how we so we needed that confidence to know that we were here for a reason. Um, and once we received that. Then that's when I mean I never forget that stuff started to kick in. You know when um you know towards the end like junior and senior year when we're doing PSATs and all this kind of stuff um when the pro and the program that we were in they had us uh, prepare for these things early early on um so it was no scrounging by senior year to, to, right. you know and that's when you found out about SAT that you needed to take it now you found out you know from uh you were well prepared grade that you needed to take your you see, so yeah. um, so that's the kind of thing. So it, it, it's basically here's the package um, that we're presenting to you. You just need to buy into it for your own success. That that, right. that was the that was the paradigm I had. Yeah, and 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 how we I, I think we underestimate the role of teachers. Um, I think it is so important. A lot of the, a lot of the times when students don't do well, they blame the parents. Um, but I, I just know that when teachers are excellent, man, when they are motivated, when they are, when they have control of the classroom, when they, when they have gotten students' attention and have the, got, given them the ability to buy into a system for their own excellence, they can, they can move mountains. A good teacher can, I've seen, I've experienced a math teacher take unprepared students for th for three out of their four years in high school and prepare them as if they were been prepared from freshman year i've seen i mean and we just need more of those kind of teachers man we need more I mean, we need more of those kind of teachers because they can take a undisciplined student <laughs> like yourself like as you call yourself and really you know prepare you to the point where if you just buy into their system and you can take it to the college level, you'll still succeed, you know? So that's amazing. Absolutely. But I, I still think that you had some... I mean, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, I'm sure you still had like some... So you said you bought into their system, you followed their lead. Is that what you're saying? Like you submitted to the... The system and you follow their lead and that that helped push you to 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 to, to finish and be excellent in um in college yeah see that was part of it okay. so when i say modeling um it was two parts so some modeling from let's say from the um uh from the from the, the leadership from the from the teachers and advisors and so forth i can't say that that was across the board i'd be lying to, right, 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 right. Across right. the board, right. But in comparison, <laughs> in comparison to, I mean, I, I've had, I've had my advisor go to toe to toe, go toe to toe with the, with, with one of my teachers, um, uh, with an issue. So mm. you know, uh, where, where, where she felt that they were being, that they were being unjust towards me. So, mm. so I had, so it was, it was, it, but in comparison to, you know, the, the, the normal system we have these days, the majority of the, of the leadership there was uh was for the success of the student right now now the other side of it the other side of it when i say modeling i'm talking about my peers also mm. so I, I i we had opportunity you know there was some really small we had some real we had a really great class we had a really great class um yeah you know coming out of that inner city right there 
you know, by the time senior year came around, we had we had quite a number of students in our in our program who had um who had uh you know acceptances to Ivy Leagues and so forth. Mm-hmm. So but we went through the process together um from freshman year all the way up, and I was able to see some of my friends, some of my good friends, take on this transition. You know, you're able to see it in your peers do the transitions, do 180s from being you know being at the bottom of the pile. And all of a sudden, by like sophomore year, they're getting all A's. Mm-hmm. And, and I knew them well. And, and the, the wonderful thing about that aspect of peer, peer interaction is that, man, especially where we were coming from, we all knew each other. We, we pretty much knew everyone's background, everyone's situation, and we, and we felt akin to one another. And that's why many of us, we still keep in touch now. That this is like, you know, almost, you know, 20 years later. Um, we old for 20 years later <laughs> um and so we know we yeah, yeah. so so we know each other and at that time we knew the type of things people were going through and so when we saw that person do the 180 and pull, pull themselves up by bootstraps and do what they needed to do it was encouraging yeah, okay and had some other peer peers who went you know since we since we all did know each other we knew we were going through this stuff together they would offer words of encouragement. They'd be like, "I know you, man. You you know this stuff. I know you could. I know you could do it." Or or or, "Wow, yeah, you did so well on that. That's great." You know. So I would I would really you know I really appreciate that there were certain things that I didn't realize about myself that I learned through that process. Mm-hmm. Um, to piggyback through on positive that, prayer, positive peer was, pressure. Yeah, yeah. You know that encouragement, that peer. A peer interaction, peer leadership kind of thing, um, where you encourage one another. Um, that came out huge for me, uh, to your point that you made earlier about, you know, the type of, you know, buying into the system. Okay. And what I said about how, you know, that's not really the case that you, you know, find with many of these systems now. Uh, man, it was a wake up call when I got to college. Of mm. Um, when I got, to come because when I by the time I was coming out of out of high school, I was like, "Yep, I'm going into this microbiology program. I'm not one of these who I don't know exactly what I want to do. I'm gonna just do bio and see where it leads me." I said, "I'm I'm I'm going straight specific. I, I know science, man. I you know I, I I did well in my sciences in high school. I may not have done that well in history, but I did wonderful in science. And then." When I sat down, I try to tell the younger folk all the time. When I sat down in that um in that auditorium with three hundred plus in intro bio, um, three hundred plus students, one professor, you know, a couple of uh of, of TAs of, of uh, teaching assistants, mm-hmm. and um and you know, you sat down, and you're like, all right, no problem, I can, I got this, I got this, you know, I did AP bio, I got this, I got this <laughs> AP bio, you know. And um, and so this is where the con- this is where that whole self discipline concept. That's where it hit me. That's where it hit me, because that's where I started to realize. I started to learn that th- this thing is, the, you know, uh, intelligence can bring you but so but far. so far. Yeah. But, but 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 when you have, and I, I can say this, you know, hindsight twenty hindsight going twenty twenty. Although I'm, I'm, I'm taking it on to, I'm taking it on for myself now. Though, when you have a foundation and a and a, and a baseline of, uh, of 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 a standard level of discipline, you know, a standard level of discipline. Me, me, you know, you you will always work or operate at a certain level or standard, no matter what, because that's your your the principle that you live by. Man, that's a whole other level right there, man. Mm-hmm. And I started to realize that that was the big difference between, you know, someone such as myself who, you know, just I was intelligent so I could wing it. Um, and some of my other counterparts who were who were excelling, excelling because they had a they had a had they had discipline. an understanding. They, they had they had a plan and they were and they were executing a plan. Mm. You know, I never had a plan. I never had a plan. I was, I was just, I was just mad. I was, just, it was straight, you know. It's like, I never forget when I tried. I, I tried to, um, I tried out for my high school basketball JV team when I was a freshman, and uh, <laughs> and, and I got all the way through. I got all, all the way through all of my, um, 
through all the tryouts. And it, it appears I was on the team. And, and, and so, and after a while, I was going to practices and coach pulled me aside one time and he was like, hey, have you ever had any like, you know, have you ever, you know, played organized ball before? Mm. And I was like, nah, man, nah, I just, I just drip, I just dribble in my, dribble in my yard. In my know? backyard. I'm like the shortest guy on the team. Even in JV, you know, and I was five nine. I stayed five nine. I'm still five nine. <laughs> and, um, and he was, and he said, "Hey, do me a favor." He said, "Go, go, and um, you know, uh, go, you know, go play in some leagues over the summer, and um, and come back." So this is just an example of learn how, the fundamentals. I, I never did that because I I never did that because because. Cause, uh, cause streetball in New York City is a whole other level. So I, I never played. <laughs> I never played. <laughs> I never played the organized ball in some of these. You right. Know? But um, but the, the, the but the point was well taken. That you you had to have certain uh, foundational standard. Absolutely. Uh, fundamental. Fundamentals. Uh, yeah. You know, in order to in order to succeed and do well. Um, and so again, when I got into college, it was modeling again. Because when I got into college, I started to realize that the people I was, I was hanging out with and the things that, because I had all that freedom going away for school, and I was able to do a lot. Um, and I was able to do a lot, had all that freedom and everything. And after a while, uh, it, my grades were suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, my grades were suffering. And so uh, one of the big things that hit me, one of the big things that, um, uh, opportunities, I should say, that came to me, um, they actually came a couple of times, but people were saying, hey, because they were looking at my character and everything, they were saying, hey, would you like to be an RA? You should be an RA. You should be an RA. And, um, and especially when I looked at the RA situation and they had a, a, a GPA requirement. Mm. And I was like, man, I don't need that level. Of, I don't need that level of pressure. Pressure. And <laughs> and I don't want to be a hall monitor. You know, I had a whole other concept of what it meant to be a RA. And, um, and so RA stands for a uh, resident assistant. It's the person who basically is in charge of the students that live in the dorm. Those of you who don't know what an RA is. Go ahead, Howie. Hello? Uh-oh. We lost. We lost. Howie? Yeah. All right, you back. You're back. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So with an RA, a resident assistant, there's a certain level of integrity and, um, and uh, you know, um, that's required or that's expected of you as you sort of like a peer leader in that sense. So, so those were things, those qualities that they saw in me um i just didn't want to commit mm. so it's an instance where where there's an opportunity for you to sort of come up a little higher right. uh, and be more disciplined, disciplined. Mm -hmm. and i look back on it now and the lord was trying to give me that i believe mm. the lord is trying to give me that opportunity to become more disciplined yeah um, i just saw it as an extra thing that i would have to do um right. that would be more difficult mm. um long story short I accepted the call. Yes, you <laughs> did. So to, speak, to become a resident assistant, uh, more so because I was in dire financial constraints. And I was like, <laughs> how much you say that is? How much you say you get? How much you get again? All right. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'll find out. And um, it was one of the best decisions I had ever made. Um, I had peers who, and this was about, I think about, uh, maybe second semester sophomore year or first semester junior year and i had peers um other stem peers you know mm -hmm. engineers and so forth we all came in freshman year in college i'm talking about now and um and there were some of them who had taken that step as well to become uh, resident assistants and so um so i had i had models going and they were looking at me and they were saying yeah man this is this is you know we expected so we expected you to be here at some point man because you you that type of dude you know uh, again people affirming for you uh what you don't think of yourself think oh my gosh about yourself. yeah so, so it's so people saw me as yeah you that yeah that dude yeah that dude and um and i, and I did at that point this is another aspect of it at that point i only thought 
I only thought that I was a science guy. I did not see myself as someone who uh, could be that person who is encouraging my peers or who is, you know, uh, you know, providing a word of encouragement and, and direction for other students um, that are coming in. I didn't see myself as that. I wanted to be that lab rat. Mm. I really wanted to be that lab rat. And, um, and I started to realize through the eyes of others that I was actually more. more. Um, and I thought that that more would compromise uh, my desire to be in the sciences. So but it actually made more you more disciplined. It probably actually made you more disciplined. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's basically what happened. I mean, I'll jump a little further. Uh, what ended up happening, talk about answering calls. Um, <clears throat> when I finally got into uh, my major, um, I finally got into my major in, in microbiology. I loved it so much. I loved my general uh, micro class so much. You know, I got like an A in there. And immediately they asked me to become a, a teaching, if I wanted to become a teaching assistant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I did really well in the lab courses and so forth. This was the first time that I started to become um, affirmed. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in, in what it is that I desired to do um, within the academic realm. Um, and, that, and, that, and, and that's significant because I said this, that was the first time, meaning I had gone through the first, uh, almost the first two years, year and a half of struggling, of struggling in my, um, in my prereqs. Let's talk prereqs. about that. Let's talk about some of the struggles that you had. What, 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 what were some of the challenges that you had when you were in college, like in the prereqs? So because of my lack of discipline, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, many times they refer to these classes as weeding out courses and so right. forth um, at, in that level. Uh, we had a huge, uh, University of Massachusetts is a huge student body, you know, over 20,000 and so forth. Um, so they're looking for the best of the best to continue on. Um, I wasn't doing so great in my prerequisites. So at many points along the way, I was considering whether this was the route for me to go. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, we'd sit down, you know how you sit down in the dining hall after you finish it, you take your exam and everything and everybody, you know, you possibly already know your, know your, uh, know your score after an exam, everybody's sitting down. When I was you know, in school, when I was in school, it's crazy. They used to put the test scores on the wall. Everybody goes to the wall and sees their test scores. And your name was in alphabetical order. Like, you, everybody saw my grade. <laughs> that was, that's unheard of now. But it's crazy. Back in those days, it was different. <laughs> so so at, least, at least you had that form of identity, you know, on, on our wall, it was the last four digits of your social. Yeah, that's, that's true. Us too. And it was the last four digits of your social in, in alphabetical order. Ah, got you. Okay. Okay. And it probably was not a Like the person. Yeah, it probably, trust me, it was alphabetical order. Last four digits of your social. It's so crazy. Anyway, go ahead. So we would go back and again, you know, uh, you know, there was about our school predominantly white, about 4% black folk. Um, yeah. And so there was, there was a small number of us um, at the, there was, so there's even a smaller percentage to our in STEM. Right. So out of all, out of all of us who come back to the dining hall and sit, you know, and eat and everything, there's like a couple of us who are pre-med engineering and so forth, but we all were taking the same prereqs. Right. And so it's like, so how we, how would you, how did you do, you know, Ben, how did you do and so forth. And, um, and like, yeah, I, I think I got like a C plus. Man, a bad day. They they don't know that. That's like that's like that's like that's like gold on the curve. You know, <laughs> it wasn't so it wasn't so bad. Like, <laughs> but the response was more so. What I remember, what, what what burns a hole in my head is that in my memory is that they would always say, "Man, you sure that's for you? You know, you sure that's yeah. for you? Y'all, all y'all in this science class, you sure that's for you? Because yeah. the rest of the rest of our group." Uh, they, 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 there's so few of us who were in STEM. The rest of our group were, was in all these other areas, business primarily. We had a good business program at UMass also. So many of the minority students were in those areas, business, marketing, and so forth. 
and we're in, in um and so it was hard to get that uh affirmation that, yeah you're not getting it from your peers because there's not a lot of you there and a lot of the times as pwis i was saying this earlier you know, even your advisors were like, you know, you're a better fit for, uh, have you ever thought of being a, a social worker? You, you know, you, your, your personality is such a great fit. I mean, it's crazy the kind of stuff that you hear at, at predominantly white institutions as a, a person of color, um, and you have to fight against the low expectations that your, your peers have of you, that you probably have of you sometimes that even your advisors and teachers have, have of you. Um, you gotta fight against that, yeah. So you were saying that when you finally made it through, you started to get, it took you like all this time until you were like in your junior year before you started getting affirmation about being in the sciences. I, I really believe, I really started, I started looking at other schools, I started looking at other programs wow. because I really felt discouraged. Um, I, I did not know I was trying to look at um, <clears throat> exercise science programs and stuff. I was still interested in, 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 in bio and, mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I must mention also, I must mention also, uh, cause this is sort of thing that, uh, that the young people go through, is that I, I started off running track and I continued running, I should say, when I got to college. Mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't want to. Um, um, anybody knows, you know, Clinton High School, but boys being, we were pretty good back then. Um, and so, so we, we, you know, we were usually, you know, top five in the city every, every year and, um, invest in the Bronx all the time. And I, I sort of thought anyone who knows me, you know, they, they, I sort of felt like I was done. Like I was good. I had my fill of, um, of, of, of the track accomplishment. And I, and I really just wanted to go up there. Yeah, I really felt like I wanted to do something else. Um, but I was encouraged. I was kind of my assistant coach encouraged me. And when you when you when it becomes a part of your routine, man, mm -hmm. you want to continue doing that thing unless you end up like Kobe, where it's like I, you literally can't anymore, you know. <laughs> so so I, 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 I really wanted to. So, so I didn't want to, but then they encouraged me that I should at least try out. And I was like, you know, I said, I'll try out. OK. And I was like, man, I, Man, that's they, they set me up, man. They know if I try out, I'm gonna get on the team. You know, if I walk, if I try out, I'm gonna, I end up walking on the team. So I got on, and um, this is just a blurb on, I guess, people who would like to uh, do the collegiate sports and so forth, and and wondering if that thing is is a good fit for them or how much of a, you know, how 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 uh, you know significant it can be, uh, make or break you, basically. Um, my personal experience, my personal experience was that I was trying to make it work, but on top of that, I didn't have that level of discipline, that standard level of discipline. And so it was even more difficult. Now, in terms of peers and, 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 uh, and models, I did have some, some great student athletes who were on the team, engineering majors and so forth, who were on the team and everything. Um, but quite honestly, at that predominantly high school, <laughs> there wasn't that many of us, uh, even on the track team. So it was interesting. So, so I couldn't really, you know, this, this aspect of relating, um, uh, and there was none of them who were in, uh, the, the, the sciences that I was in. And so it was very tough to, to, for relatability right. in order to really get, get your bearings. Um, and so after a while, and, and that was part of, and that was part of that, um, that was part of that uh, RA situation and, 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 and the problem with um, the problem with uh, the financial situation. All that stuff started to culminate all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to figure out whether I should even continue to run track or not because of the financial situations. Um, specifically, there were I started to realize that I was not going to get any money. Um, one of the best guys on the team, because he was out of state, he didn't get a full ride, you know? Wow. <laughs> so they were not giving anybody money. No. So I was like, man, yeah, he was from Jersey. And, and you know, he wasn't getting a So I was like, man, you know, that ain't going to happen to me. So I said, listen, you know, you're going to have to make some, a decision. Uh, decision is yeah. And um, it was literally, it was literally a, a, a heart to heart uh, that I ended up having with my dad. 
and my dad was like, listen, man, you know, because one semester, it looked like I wasn't going to be able to make it back. And, um, and my dad told me that, and I was very, very upset, and uh, I wanted to blame it on my parents and so forth. I was resentful, and, um, and he, and he, you know, they ended up, uh, my, that same sister, actually, she came through big time. And she took out money to help me go back for that semester. Mm. And we had friends of the family that helped me to go back for that semester. And that's how wow. I was able to go back. And so you were having financial year. struggles just to even go back to college, just to even finish. This is the kind of stuff that so many of us are facing. But thank God, you know, he, he made a way, you know, with family yeah. and support systems. And, yeah, you you, you, said, you guys, you had, listen, I had to be an RA, and it paid half. I'm sure it pays your um, room and board, right? Yeah, it was room and board. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not including meals, but everything yeah. else, uh, you know, your state. And on top of that was a stipend. Um, so it was pretty good. Anyway, you know, that, 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 that's a, we, we've been talking quite a bit of your college experience. And we we have to my move on to, to 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 your challenges now. So, what do you do now? Can you tell the audience what you actually do? Because so, you finally made it with all those challenges. <laughs> you made it with a bachelor's in microbiology. What do you what do you do for a living now? So, um, lo and behold, I became a microbiologist. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so, right after. Right out of, I mean, it was, it was amazing. That's a, that's a whole other story there, how the Lord came through in my life at that time. Um, uh, the big, big challenge for me was to determine whether I was going to do clinical microbiology, such as my sister had done, or environmental. Um, uh, the school was really big on environmental. I ended up uh, doing an internship in uh, the food science department which at the time I did not realize that, I had no idea, but it was one of the top uh, programs and still is right now apparently, one of the top programs in the country uh, for food science. Uh, I think the next one is Purdue University, mm. their food science department. So a lot of, um, a lot of uh, in terms of uh, the food science industry and food processing and so forth come out of, <clears throat> a lot of scientists come out of those programs. Um, and so I ended up, uh, uh, through that internship, actually, because that's how I became privy to uh, uh, knowledgeable about the uh, Food and Drug Administration. I ended up applying to the Food and Drug Administration and became a microbiologist uh, for the Food and Drug Administration. So that's what I that's what I uh, I started off doing. I was very uh, I was very um, very fortunate. I graduated May of that year, and then I started in August of that year. From that point on, I had a, I had a career with the Listen, I mean, just to take a pause, like this, his life is miraculous. I believe that his life has been uh, ordained by God. Like he, he was in a good program and it's not like he's not a smart dude, but just to have an opportunity to become a microbiologist at the FDA right after graduating high school, I mean, college, excuse me, uh, within, uh, June, July, or three months of graduating, he had a job waiting for him at the FDA. That is a blessing. That is miraculous. Miraculous. I mean, on top of that miraculous, <laughs> miraculous uh, aspect of it, uh, you know, remember, I was, I was in Massachusetts. My home is Bronx, New York. Mm. Um, uh, the, the, the position ended up, I mean, I was looking for positions in Massachusetts just because of proximity and so forth. Right. Um, and I actually didn't want to start working that, that quickly. I really wanted to feel it out and everything and see what was out there. Um, and, uh, but that position was back in Queens, New York. Yeah. Um, and so I, I ended up coming right back home mm. uh, with an opportunity to be right there. And I was just taking the train uh, from, from, from where I grew up out to Queens. Um, wow. And so it was a great, it was a great opportunity. Um, then as a microbiologist uh, with the FDA, uh, one of the greatest things that I like about um, the agency and, um, and my experience there is that uh, for one, the agency is so huge. It's so vast. Um, uh, there's so many different aspects to what the FDA does um, that it, it it's crazy. And so because of that, uh, I think in comparison to many of the other agencies under the Department of Health and Human Services, 
um, the agency provides the opportunity for you to explore all of these different areas. So you have scientists, you have investigators, you have compliance officers, you have, you know, you, you have actual scientists who are doing research and so forth. So you have all these different areas of, um, uh, of, of public health work that the agency does. Um, my work in particular as an analyst, specifically a microbiologist, is regulatory science. And so under regulatory, under the umbrella of regulatory science, you have uh, microbiologists, chemists, um, you know, you have all these different aspects of uh, the agency. And then also that's not, not just food science, but that's also pharmaceutical mm -hmm. science, you know. But you, like what, you just basically measure, you measure um, the microbiological content found in the foods that we eat. So he's like the protector of our food. If we, if he finds E. coli, next thing you know, uh, you know, Chipotle is telling the world, hey, we found E. coli. It's, you know, most likely some kind of regulatory body found it and demanded that they expose it, right? Is that basically well, what you yeah, do? Not, necess not necessarily. Not necessarily, yeah. okay. Then you get in some legal mumbo jumbo. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, uh, I didn't tell him I was having this interview. Okay, know. okay, okay. <laughs> but basically, you 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 see what's in the food of our you you look you investigate what's scientifically what's in the foods that we eat. That's a simple way of saying right. it. Right, and so right, and so regulatory science in that. So we have the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. Okay, um, and so every uh, every 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 form of industry that falls under the purview of that act is then subject to those laws. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so part of that is, you know, if, if there is something found, especially that we find, uh, we do a number of different types of analyses from routine analyses to directed analyses. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've got people out there, out there in the field who are constantly collecting samples. And, and so we, we basically determine headquarters, basically determines you know, the areas that they want to keep a watch and a mm -hmm. eye on. So of course we, of course, you know, when it comes to outbreaks and so forth, um, you know, we had things such as peanut butter with salmonella, mm -hmm. and to some other aspects with E. coli and things like that. Um, yeah, um, whether it be a, a uh, something suspected that comes into the lab or something that is just a routine sample that we end up finding something in, yes, that now has to go to compliance and the compliance will, will do whatever they need to do on their part to make sure that industry is made aware and mm -hmm. so forth. So these controls need to be in place. Right, absolutely. That's very important. So like, what are your challenges? And then also tell me what you like the best. You kind of talked about what you like the most. You talked about how it's it's versatile and et cetera. But what, what are your challenges that you can talk about online? <laughs> <laughs> I got colleagues on baby. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, I guess I could say the, the, the challenge, the challenge sometimes, especially for, um, especially for, um, new, uh, new employees. And, and this is most especially actually in the lab is that, because it's government work, sometimes it can feel very uh, routine mm. and sometimes mundane. mundane. And so people get into a, you know, they get into a funk a little bit where you're just doing the same things over and over again, especially mm -hmm. if you are uh, research oriented. Um, if you're that sort of, the, you know, you, you, you want to think and training. ask questions. Right. If you, so, if you're, so if your training was primarily innovation and mm -hmm. doing things all the time mm -hmm. um that that can be that can be a struggle for you not to say that 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 there, there aren't venues for that there there aren't environments for that in the agency but it takes patience for you to really do your research and find out where those avenues are and then navigate to them people mm -hmm. have done it all the time it's just that when you're new sometimes you get discouraged and so for me that actually ended up happening uh, at about my sixth or seventh year you know, I ended up saying, wow, I really want to do something else. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's when I took a stint as, as an investigator. Uh, um, and I took the opportunity to, to be in the field. So I went through that sort of a doldrum mm -hmm. from the repetition of the lab. 
and um, and then I went into the field and and I really enjoyed that aspect of it because I was able to go and actually be in the midst of industry industries and deal with the people deal with the people who are you know who, who we regulate right so and, and not only an advocate but an advocate for basically an advocate for truth, so to speak. And that's you know, called an a, a that's called a consumer safety officer, right? That's correct. Mm -hmm. AKA uh, also known as a, an investigator. So, mm -hmm. so that's what you know the namesake is a consumer safety officer. Yeah, you can you guys can look that up. You can go on FDA dot or USA.gov and there's lots of opportunities, you know. USA and, job. USAjobs.gov. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, there's like a big swoop of people. They just start hiring a whole bunch of people where you could be just graduating from college, like Howard, and within three months have a job. And sometimes it's a little bit more difficult. But um, you could be a, a microbiologist. You could be a CSO. You know, there's, as he was saying, there's lots of things you could, you could, you could move through once you get in. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also just a great, it's, it's like you, you never really stop learning also. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, there's always something new going on. I, I said the mundane aspect of it, but there, there's, there's this, because, you know, you find these shifts um, uh, in time uh, when it comes to outbreaks and so forth, these kind of things just sort of shift over time when it seems like maybe there's a lapse in, in, in how vigilant industry is and mm -hmm. so forth. And then as a result, people may become injured by it. Right. So, Things, things do, you know, end up shifting and, and shaking. And so, you know, when we're on top of our game, when we're on top of doing things, you know, we actually, I can actually see where I'm protecting the public health. And that's, mm. that's, that's pretty valuable for, a, uh, for being in a workplace and, and, and believing that what you do matters. So is that one of your favorite things? Like you, you, you feel like you're protecting the health of others in some kind of way, in your own way? Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, it's two sided. It's two sided for me with that. Okay. Um, because, like I said uh, a little earlier, there's an aspect of me um, that is that scientist that likes to do what I do from the bench. Mm. But then I was, I, 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 I learned further about myself that that I'm also the kind of person who likes to be one-on-one -on -one with, with people. people, likes to be, yeah. you know, so like, likes to affect public health from a more direct um, manner. Mm -hmm. And so in order to, you know, in order to, in order to sort of uh, circumvent that, I just do a bunch of other stuff on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. I, just, absolutely. I, work on, I work on, I work through my church and, you know, and try to you know, do mentorship and, and work with the young people and, you know, these type of things as much as I can uh, to sort of, uh, you know, be on the ground mm. uh, where, where, where it's actually hurting uh, from, from real, and not, not necessarily more real, but, you know, more, more tangible aspects to hurt, you know. Right. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Howard. Um, Mr. Howard Webley, uh, you told us quite a bit about your journey. Um, as a microbiologist, and I know there's some people out there, some guys out there um, who feel like they might be undisciplined or they may not um, feel supported. But here's an example of a guy that in the midst of that, um, he succeeded, he made it through, and he ended up getting affirmations in his own way. And, and ultimately, God directed your path, Howard. He really, he really That's did. Fun. Um, he really helped you and gu guided you, and I'm sure that in whatever future endeavors that you're doing, um, he will guide and direct you still. <laughs> like, he's in control. So, I, you know, I want you to get back to that because we spent a good hour on this call here. <laughs> uh -huh. But anyway, uh, I am the phenomenal stemist. And so is this dude right here, Mr. Howard she Rebley. Is. She is. <laughs> Is. Thanks a lot, Howard. Good night, guys. Yeah, you've also been a wonderful model, also as well. You continue to be a wonderful model. Thank you, thank you. I do my best, and you don't don't let it, don't get it twisted. You are a great model as well. Great model as well in temperament, in mindset, everything. <laughs> Thanks again, Howard. Oh, and trust me, Howard has how is Matt is married with. Four kids, 
one who was like what six months how how was how how yeah, he's been almost, almost four months four months. months so he's busy too in other ways <laughs> I, I had to lock my door, lock my door for this interview. i'm sure i'm like i haven't heard anybody I, yeah they were knocking they were knocking on the door <laughs> Thanks so much, Howard. Good night, guys. All right. Blessings. All right.